Hello again, welcome back to Asgard and welcome back to our Misty World tutorial spotlight series. So today we have a bit to cover. We're going to talk about going down into the mist. What you're going to do, the very first thing you need to do is you need to get yourself a pick. Starting out, you're going to probably have to go for a wooden, I mean a stone pick. And so what you'll do is you'll collect these rocks that you're going to see just all over the place. Just collect these and just right click to do so and you'll pick them up. Um, and of course, getting sticks, you can break, you know, leaves and things like that, or you can just punch down uh, the entire tree just like normal, and you're going to get some sticks and wood and stuff like that. Any type, any type of tree that you can find, uh, you're going to be able to do that. So once you get your, uh, your sticks and your rocks, then you can just craft a wooden, you know, a wooden pick just like you normally would, um, or a, st a stone pick like you normally would. Um, get that crafted out. And then you're going to go uh, mining. Now, there is, um, in the Misty World, there's five different ores that are going to spawn. I'm sorry, seven, eight different ores that are going to spawn normally. Um, you're going to be able to find lapis, gold, and iron. Um, and you'll be able to see some iron down here. Lapis and gold, it's a bit deeper down uh, to get that. But uh, the most important ores that you're going to be mining are the Misty World exclusive ones. Those are Niobium, Filter Coal, Bacterial Shell, Saltpeter, and Sulfur. And running around up here, you're going to be able to find Filter Coal pretty regularly. Now, one thing you will notice, though, is if we go into Game Mode S, you cannot break this with a stone pick. You're going to have to get Niobium and make a pick from that before you're going to be able to mine it. And in addition, you are going to find deposits of Saltpeter um, in the world. But just like before, you're not going to be able to break this with stone. And the same goes for iron and pretty much anything that's up here, um, as well as the stone itself. That's because up here, this stone is a bit harder. It's going to require that you have a niobium pick before you can break anything up here. Um, niobium, you're going to be able to break. And that's because it sits actually down in the mist. And the mist kind of has a corrosive effect um, on blocks and things. Theoretically, um, you're not going to see it, you know, eating away things necessarily, um, excluding really one particular block, which we're going to talk about this episode. Um, but what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to wait till nighttime. So if we set it to night, um, you're going to notice that this mist will begin to go down. You can actually see it um, steadily going down here. And it may take a second because I've used commands to set it. Normally, it kind of fluctuates throughout the day. And so once night hits, it's going to basically subside down uh, quite a few blocks. And you'll be able to see a bit deeper down into the mist. And once it goes down, there's a chance that you might spot some niobium. Now, you can, technically, you can just get in there and start mining away. That is an option. Um, basically, once you see this porous foggy stone, you're going to be able to break this with your pick. So once you start seeing that exposed, you know you can mine. Actually, right over there, you can see there is a couple veins or a couple bits of niobium. Um, so this stuff, you're going to want to mine. And then as soon as you get a few pieces, um, at least three, you're going to head back up. And at this point, you should probably make a furnace. This is crafted just like a normal furnace, but it uses rocks instead. Um, and it is not ore dictionary to work with like cobble or anything like that. And the reason being, it works a bit different than a standard furnace. So if you open it up, you can see there's a couple different things here. Um, basically, this has an open. This is an open um, vent setting. And this is a closed vent setting. And basically, it's going to allow air and heat to move in and out of it. Um, if it's open, if it's closed, it's going to trap that heat in. So what we're going to need to do, we're going to have to get a flint and steel, um, which you can make flint and stone um, with flint and rocks. And if we put something combustible into there, like I'm going to put bacterial shale, um, really anything that's combustible. So if you have coal, if you have filter coal, if you have wood, any of that's fine. So right now with it open, it's going to kind of pull heat in. And you see a bar over here on the left that's slowly, um, slowly filling up, right? That means it's making ash right now. Um, and you'll also see this is like changing colors. That's heat building up. This thing can store a crazy amount of heat and kind of just store it up. 
um, as it cooks down um, your whatever fuel you're that you're using right and once it finishes this it does take a little bit but we're going to get a little bit of ash there we go so if you're wanting ash that's a good way to do it you can also find it from dungeons and stuff like that now if we were to close this off take that and slide it over and we put this into here it's going to use that stored up heat now to smelt your niobium you will notice it doesn't emit nearly as much light uh, whenever it's closed off there we go and if we open it back up now the flame is burning again um, and that's basically how the furnace here works um, and how you're going to smelt your stuff now once you get your niobium you can make your niobium pick and at this point you can start mining things like filter coal iron uh, saltpeter all that stuff all that stuff that you spot up here at this point it's time that we can head down into the mist now what you're going to want to do before you head down there though is you're going to want to make at least a respirator for your first trip in and there are two different types of basic leather respirators there is the open and the regular open um, scrapped like this the uh, the uh, closed one has one additional leather on it and basically the difference is you can see there is a 5% difference in their impermeability um, which does mean that the closed one is going to be more effective but bear in mind that the closed one is not going to allow you to eat while you're wearing it so you have to have your mouth free um, to be able to eat food and this one is not going to allow that but it may not be a bad idea because you may not be spending a ton of time down in the mist at least for your first trip now once you decide which one you want to use though what you can do is you can take I'm going to use just a standard one you can shift right click to open it up and you're going to want to take some filter coal pop that into there and close it out and you can see that we have efficiency of 76.5 percent um, and you can see our filter is filter coal and our level of pollution is zero and then what we're going to do we're going to open up this little slot here or you can just right click it from your hand doesn't matter um, but you can open up that little slot there and just put it in and you're going to get uh, you know a little visual showing that you have that equipped and at the bottom right you can see that we do have filter coal next to our hot bar and it will um, show our durability as uh, as it's used up because it will take damage while we're down in the mist um, to filter the air that we breathe now if we head down into the mist once we get down here you're going to notice that I start getting some uh, kind of like little bars up there on the top left uh, if I take this one off you'll notice a little bit faster there we go uh, you'll notice that we do take damage when we're not filtering at all and um, you will notice two bars up there one is your toxicity one is your um, pollution level so just a heads up there and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to scale down and sometimes you'll step on gravel and it will fall and sometimes it's a little bit harder to scale down into this and once we get to the bottom well I got a terrible bottom but I'm gonna go ahead and pop into uh, creative mode at this point just to show you um, you're gonna see some ores growing in the walls there's some bacterial shale um, which you can use to make torches um, you can also use charcoal of course um, from the trees but you can make torches um, from that it also makes a really powerful fuel source it's very very uh, has very very high burn time and then you'll see some niobium and if we head on into this you're gonna see a new fluid and this is acid if you step into this you will take damage and you also get a bit of those uh, up there at the top left if we go into game mode S you can see I'm taking a lot of damage and you'll notice up at the top left my uh, my toxicity level or my pollution level is going up um, rather quickly and in addition if items fall into this after a few seconds they will be destroyed they will be eaten up by the acid um, you'll notice that just despawned or uh, was destroyed and looking around down here that's most of what you're gonna see you're gonna see this carpet lichen go ahead and grab a little bit of this I would suggest and over here you're gonna notice some weird plants these are foggy sponges I do highly suggest you just harvest from some of these 
Um, sometimes you'll find ones that have a little node on top. And ideally what you're looking for are some of these right here. You'll notice a few different types. There's these that are like pretty much young growth um, foggy sponges. You know, there's not much, not much going on. They're pretty much just straight up, no top or anything like that. Then they're going to get these orange kind of spots on them, um, kind of in the pores of the sponge. And then eventually they will get these nodes on top. And if you, if you uh, break these ones that have the nodes on top, you're going to notice that we can get a few different things here. We're going to get uh, foggy sponges, which we can clean, um, really just kind of for building and stuff like that. Um, we're going to get foggy sponge meat, and we're going to get foggy sponge spores. And we can go ahead and break off, you know, a few of these. You will also get um, dirty fibers of foggy sponge. And at that point, um, unless you're down here for something specific like mod related or anything like that, or a mod pack related, uh, maybe grab some bacterial shell. Um, maybe if you want some gold, um, you can grab that. Lapis will be kind of down around here sometimes too. And there's also these creepy caves. There's no mobs or anything like that down here, at least at the moment. I know there's plans, I think, to have mobs. Um, but unless you have something mod pack specific, you're not going to see any mobs down here. So once you're ready, I would go ahead and pop back up. You don't want to spend a like extreme amount of time down there. I wouldn't suggest anyway. Um, and one thing you can do is you can take that carpet lichen, which if you get, um, if you don't have silk touch, what you're going to get is the, uh, right here, the soured soil, either wet or dry. Um, it doesn't matter, carpet lichen or soured soil. And you can plant your foggy sponges and actually grow them up here above the mess. You don't have to go down there every time um, to harvest any of that stuff that you may want. Now these dirty fibers, these are kind of important because if you wash these with some water, you'll get fiber of foggy sponge, which has a filtration depth of 90%, um, as opposed to filter coal, which only has 85%. Um, so it is kind of an upgrade and very easy to farm as opposed to filter coal, which is a little bit harder to farm, right? Because once you get a good patch of these foggy sponges, um, you can use these. Of course, you don't have to, you don't really need a ton of them um, because unless you're just down in the mist all the time, it's not like you're going to be running through these things like super fast. Uh, one thing to note though is these, in my experience, these do break a bit quicker. Like their durability is not as high as filter coal in my experience. Um, so just a heads up on that. Now, before we quickly talk about the protective suit, um, going down into the mist, there's a couple other things that can come in handy. Uh, first up is absorbance. So these are just kind of bulk absorbance. The filter coal block, for example, if you place this down, there's a small area around it, and it is fairly small, that will be cleared of pollution. Um, now, this will take damage, and steadily it will die off, just like you know putting filter coal into a respirator um, you know, will eventually die off. Uh, so just kind of bear that in mind. There is also the gas analyzer, um, which you can rarely find as you're exploring in the misty world. Uh, you can rarely find this, and it will tell you kind of how strong the gas is. We'll take a closer look at that in just a moment um, in specific areas, and uh, it kind of gives you a reading. But if we, if we pop into creative mode and we start heading down into the mist, you're going to notice this thing goes off. So right here, the mist is not... Um, super deadly, right? There's not a lot of toxicity or anything in the mist in this area. But as we go deeper, you're going to notice it starts really kind of filling up. And as we run around, there is some variation from spot to spot. Um, so you'll notice where we're headed right now, it's actually less toxic than it was over there. It's not too much more toxic than just right where the mist was, right? Not too much more. Uh, so this thing can be handy. Um, I wouldn't. I would not go out of my way to try to farm one up, but uh, it can be useful. And then there's these filter coal blocks, which, if you notice, barely any toxicity in this area. Now the last thing we need to talk about is going out and getting latex. So what you're going to want to do is find yourself one of these tropic biomes and find yourself a rubber tree. And you're going to want to make what's called a latex pot. It takes a niobium nugget, a couple string, and a flower pot, or you can replace that niobium with iron, 
of course that being the default recipe and you're gonna take your latex pot and you're just gonna attach it right there okay after about uh, five to ten minutes it finally got its first tick of latex so you can notice there's a very small amount of latex in there or rubber um, and basically this pot has to fill all the way up and then you are going to get be able to pull it out as latex uh, this right here so it is going to take a while um, as you can imagine uh, I would suggest if you have chunk loading chunk load these and go ahead and set up a lot of them as many as you can find of course the limiting factor being that they are fairly rare and only spawn in the tropical biomes it can be a bit of a pain also worth mentioning if you do not have the recipe for the latex pot available I would suggest that you just find one of these rubber trees and break off some of the um, you know the limbs and stuff like that uh, because it may be advancement tied for you uh, in that case and you know that that's with default settings um, I believe it's advancement tied and uh, so the latex pot recipe may not be showing up for you so but anyways, once this fills up, once you get your latex, what you're going to do is you're going to combine that with some sulfur. And when it comes time to get your sulfur, um, you're going to go down here. You're going to have to mine around. It's going to be pretty uncommon to find. Uh, but you can find this sulfur ore right here. That's what you're looking for. And once you get that and you get your latex, you combine them together and you get rubber. And this rubber is used to make your protective suit. And if you want to build with it, it's going to be rare. You're going to need a lot of this stuff. It's going to be a pain. So just a forewarning there. It's a very, very painful grind. Um, but you just combine those two together. You get your rubber. Then you make whatever you want to make with it. And once you get your protective suit, you can throw this on. And there you go. It's going to give you some added protection while you're down in the mist. And you also have a couple different respirators available. Uh, let's go ahead. Let's take this one. Let's add some filter coal and Let's equip that So fully suited out. That's what I'm gonna look like you will still build up Because um, I mean this is 80% protection um, And then on top of that we have the 80.75 uh, Percent efficiency, you will notice the pollution is building up on this um, But we're not at full 100% protection. There's no way to get that so you're still gonna get a little bit of toxicity But it's very 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 slow uh, when you're wearing this full suit and one other small thing that I want to mention is when you're in the mist if it begins raining or if it's raining when you go down there uh, just a heads up that is going to when you're below the mist it's gonna become acid rain and it is going to damage you and increase those toxicity levels uh, so just kind of bear that in mind I don't suggest you be down here whenever it's raining the glass container we'll talk more about this and how it works but it allows you to eat even when your mouth is covered with a respirator um, very craftable once you get the rubber although a little bit expensive with the really the cost of rubber um, and how much time it takes and then lastly uh, to get rid of your intoxication and your chemical um, pollution bar um, you know intoxication being the skull chemical pollution being the green uh, for chemical pollution it's pretty easy just craft yourself some soap I was just tallow, ash, and saltpeter. We're going to talk a little bit more about tallow uh, in an upcoming episode. But you can craft that, or you can just hang out in water, and you're going to steadily get yourself clean. But you can take the soap, and you can just scrub it off. And this soap takes a little bit of durability damage, uh, but it goes pretty far. And then you have detox items. There are silver mushrooms, gold mushrooms, tender fungus, desert fish swim bladders, night berries, and stone tree berries. Uh, all of these are excessively, excessively rare. Um, <laughs> Desert fish swim bladders, you can find these. They're actually from a mob um, called the Desert Fish. And you will find them spawning in those clay lakes that I mentioned a bit back. Uh, in, you know, in the last episode, those clay lakes, you can find them there. Uh, stone tree berries are extremely rare finds off of trees. And you're going to just harvest those with a right click. We're going to talk about that uh, in an upcoming episode. We're going to talk about harvesting seeds and berries and things from trees. So very, very rare. You may find 20 stone tree, 
uh, stone trees and not find a single berry. It's happened to me. I, <laughs> it's very, very uncommon to find one of these. Uh, night berries, you're going to find these in the swamps and they're going to be growing and you can only harvest them at night. Um, also excessively rare. Uh, tender fungus spawns, I believe it is in the forests, though I've never personally found one before, but I believe it is in the forest where you find one of those. Uh, but like I said, I've never personally personally found one. Uh, gold mushrooms I know spawn in the jungles um, because I have found one personally. <laughs> that was the detox item that I managed to find in uh, Heavens of Sorcery, but I got lucky on that one. Then there's also silver mushrooms that are going to spawn in the jungles as well. So you kind of got like two different versions there in the jungles that you can find. Uh, this one that you could find in the forests, like kind of the... Uh, the temperate climactic zones. Um, you have the night berries that you can find in the swamps, the stone tree berries which you can find in the cold climates, and the desert fish swim bladder that you can find in the savanna and desert, uh, the hot climactic zones. So they're, they are spread out across the climactic zones and you'll be able to find, um, technically possibly be able to find one in any climactic zone uh, that you may find yourself in. However, as mentioned, they are super, super rare. Tr saplings and detox items are just crazy rare in this mod, um, at least in the current versions, um, to the point that it's really hard to farm saplings and it's really hard to farm um, or to even find detox items a lot of times. But once again, it will passively go down as you're doing other things. So realistically, I would probably just do other things while it goes down. If it does get dangerously high, just go do something else uh, and then come back whenever it goes down or just AFK and go to sleep and <laughs> hopefully it'll go down a little bit. Um, I've noticed through like building and stuff like that, it goes down at a fine rate uh, to not really have to worry about. Uh, but anyways, I'm going to end out this episode here because I know it's wrapping up points. Next episode, we're going to talk about some of the other mechanics, I think, uh, within the Misty World and some of the other things that we can do within the Misty World. So things like carving wood, making campfires, using those glass containers, making stews, and so on and so forth. Uh, there's actually a lot of really cool kind of hidden, almost hidden mechanics within the Misty World. And that's, I think, where the mod shines the most is in those hidden mechanics. Um, so anyways, we're going to get into that next episode, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button, and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out, and I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe, I'll see you guys then.